Hello and welcome to Econ 201 Microeconomics. This video will introduce you to what economics is and why it's important. We live in the information age and the amount and access to information is growing. How is information important to economics? Well, let's first discuss what economics is. It is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. This may look different depending on who you are. If you are a middle or upper income earning person in the United States, then it may look like this. But if you are a low income person living in poverty, scarcity may look like this. Whatever the case, if you want more, you or someone working for you must work and produce it. We labor to produce things that we want. We also labor to earn money, to buy things that we want. Adam Smith, an economist and philosopher who lived in the 1700s, had an insight and he called it division of labor. Division of labor, labor is when uh, the creating of a product or service is divided into a number of tasks performed by different workers. Modern businesses do this and by so doing create many job classifications. Dividing work in this way provides the opportunity for workers to specialize in certain tasks where they can have an advantage. This advantage leads to more production at higher quality levels and lower costs. The reduction of total average cost through increased production is called economies of scale. Workers who specialize in producing one certain good or service turn to trade to acquire the other goods and services they desire. In the end, this decision on how to obtain our wants and needs with limited resources is the study of economics. What can you gain from studying economics? First of all, you can find new solutions to issues found in life because these problems have an economic dimension. Second, you can become a better citizen through thoughtful study of issues as you vote and perform civic duties. Third, you can become well versed in economics and be a well rounded thinker, which can enrich your life and the life of those economics with as whom a whole. It covers a lot of ground. So, to better understand it, we break it into two parts macroeconomics and microeconomics. Let's explain what each part entails, starting with microeconomics. Microeconomics focuses on the actions of individual agents within the economy, like households, workers, and businesses. Economists looking at microeconomic issues ask themselves these types of questions. What determines how households and individuals spend their budgets? What combination of goods and services will best fit their needs and wants, given the budget they have to spend? How do people decide whether to work, and if so, whether to work full-time or part-time? How do people decide how much to save for the future, or whether they should borrow or spend their current means? Furthermore, economists studying microeconomic issues ask these questions about businesses. What determines the products, and how many of each a firm will produce and sell? What determines what prices a firm will charge? What determines how a firm will produce its products? What determines how many workers it will hire? How will a firm finance its business? When will a firm decide to expand, downsize, or even close? Economists looking at macroeconomic issues ask themselves these types of questions. What determines the level of economic activity in a society? In other words, what determines how many goods and services a nation actually produces? What determines how many jobs are available in the economy? What determines a nation's standard of living? What causes the economy to speed up or slow down? What causes firms to hire more workers 
or to lay workers off? Finally, what causes the economy to grow over the long term? Eco macroeconomic theory allows for two types of governmental policies that influence the economy of a nation or state. These policies are monetary and fiscal. Monetary policy deals with a country's money supply, banking system, and interest rates. Fiscal policy deals with the collection and spending of tax money by the government. The two main parts of economics, micro and macro, provide a starting point to dive into even more detailed and timely issues regarding economics as a discipline. How do economists use theories and models to understand economic issues? Economists analyze issues and problems using theories and models. A theory is an idea or a, a set of ideas that is intended to explain facts or events. Economists have theories related to how people behave and ultimately how the economy behaves. Economists use simplified theories to show how two or more variables interact. Like the two variables that make up the demand for a product, price and quantity interact with each other. A model is nothing more than an applied representation of a theory. Models help us apply economic theories to real world situations. One such model that gives us insight into how an economy works with its individual parts is the circular flow diagram. In this diagram we see two groups of market participants represented, households and firms. We also see two markets in which they interact, the goods and services market and the labor market. The inner circle flow represents the labor market. It entails both the labor provided to the firms and the payment for those labor services in the form of wages, salaries, and benefits. The outer circle flow represents the goods and services market. The two halves are the goods and services made by the firms and sold to the households and the income derived from selling those goods and services. Modern economic systems are complex. We will discuss three ways societies have found to organize an economy. The traditional economy, the command economy, and the market economy. In traditional economies, what you produce is what you get to consume. Little to no trade happens in these economies. This system can still be found in parts of Asia, Africa, and South America. In a command economy, the government is in control of what and how much of each good and service is produced and who can consume them. North Korea and Cuba are modern command economies. A market is an institution where buyers and sellers come together. In a market economy, buyers and sellers determine how much they will buy and sell of each good and service and at what price. Most market economies are based on private enterprise, where private individuals own the means of production, like land, buildings, and natural resources. In command economies, the means of production are owned by government. Most economies today are a mixture of traditional, command, and market economies. Even the U.S. economy is a mixed economy. This mix happens many times in the form of government regulations that directly or indirectly affect the markets. In economies that are heavily regulated, underground markets may emerge where transactions are completed without government approval, like the buying and selling of illegal drugs. One last concept related to economics and markets is globalization which is the connecting and trading between people around the world. In economic terms, globalization has been the source of international trade and financial transactions. The trading of goods and services leaving a country is called exports, and the trading of goods and services entering a country is called imports. 
In the end, each country keeps track of their overall production by a measure called Gross Domestic Product, or GDP.